Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new GMK Tech Nookbox G3 Plus. And this thing is coming in with a very low price point. In fact, getting out of the box up and running, 130 or if you've already got RAM and storage, you can get it for a bit cheaper picking up the bare bones model. And this is an upgraded version of their original G3 Nook box. And what makes this a bit different is this is powered by the N150 CPU instead of the N100. Now in this video, I've got a lot that I want to test, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. Inside of the box, obviously, you'll get the G3 mini PC itself. We've also got our 35 watt power supply, 6 foot HDMI cable, and a mounting bracket along with hardware. So we can mount this on the back of a monitor, wall, or desk. And they are offering two different color variants. What I've got here is known as their lush green, but they've also got a titanium gray. It's really up to you. Personally, I probably would pick the titanium gray over this one. And as for I.O., up front here, we've got two full-size USB 3.2 ports. Moving around back, we've got two full-size HDMI ports, two more USB 3.2s. This does support 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. We've also got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and our power input jack. I also wanted to give you a look at the internals here, and it's really easy to get in here. The top just pops right off, and with these N-series chips, it only supports single-channel RAM. So that's what we've got here, and this just happens to be the 16-gig model. We've also got a 512-gigabyte 2280 M.2 SSD, but if you take a closer look, there's another SSD slot here, and this actually supports a 2242. So there is a little bit of upgradability here. I mean, when it comes to RAM, we've got that single channel, but we can add two M.2 SSDs. And of course, when it comes to the specs here, like I mentioned, this is powered by the Intel N150 CPU. This has four cores, four threads, and it is an upgrade over the N100 because we've got a higher clock going up to 3.6 gigahertz as opposed to 3.4 on the N100. We've got an Intel UHD iGPU with 24 compute units, and this will clock up to 1,000, so we've also got a boost there over the N100. The unit I have here has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz, but they do sell an 8 gig model for a bit cheaper, and you can go with the bare bones if you wanted to. We've got one M.2 2280 slot, one M.2 2242 slot, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11 out of the box. So first things first, I wanted to give you a look at the BIOS, and there's one setting here I highly recommend changing to get better performance out of this device. That's going to be in our main section, the power limit select. Out of the box, it's at balance. That's going to give us a 10 watt TDP on the CPU and GPU no matter what. It's just going to be 10 watts across the board. High performance is 15 watts. And just taking this up by 5 watts makes a huge difference with the N150. And initially, going into the BIOS, I didn't notice the power limit select directly from here. There's a quiet, balanced, high performance, definitely high performance. That's exactly what you want. But I went to advanced CPU configuration, just trying to find uh, a way to adjust the TDP from here. The settings are kind of hidden. But then I noticed we had the power limit select, which is going to make it easy for everybody to take this thing up. So that's about it. I just went in there, high performance, save changes and exit. Now we'll get into Windows. Okay, so here we are with Windows 11, and as you can see, we've got the Intel N150. Base clock on this is 800 megahertz, so we've got four cores, four threads, but all four cores can boost up to 2.9 at the same time. 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz DDR4. This only supports a single channel, that's why we only saw a single DIMM inside of the mini PC. 
I do wish they were using DDR5 because that would help out with the iGPU. But speaking of that, we've got it right here and it will allocate up to eight gigs of memory for the iGPU. Now from the BIOS, we went to performance mode and I want to show you here. So I've got core temp. This is going to show us our TDP right here and I'll zoom in just a bit. CPU-Z, we'll just run a stress test. This will jump up to 11.5 watts. So we're not quite at 15, but that's because we basically got all we need for the uh, CPU side on all four cores there. Once we put a load on the GPU, you'll see this jump up to a 15 watt TDP. And really going any higher than this really isn't gonna make much of a difference because at 15 watts, we can send enough to the iGPU and the CPU to keep the clocks up. And another thing to keep in mind here is when going to that performance setting from the BIOS, it's also going to swap out that fan curve for us for a little bit of a more aggressive curve so we don't hit thermal throttle at 15 watts, but it's still a very quiet unit. This is about three feet away from me right now, and I can't hear it spinning up. And of course, just judging by the overall specs of the N150, it's not a super powerful chip. I mean, this isn't going to do AAA games at full speed. You know, natively, you can definitely use cloud gaming if you want. But it's great for web browsing, video playback, email checking, document editing. Here we are over at GMK Tech's website and everything loads up really quickly here. Very image heavy. And you can see that the bare bones right now is 125. The 8 gig model is 129. Same thing over on Amazon right now. Next thing we're going to do here is check out some YouTube video playback. We'll do a 4K demo here. So it should be 4K 60 HDR. We'll make sure we're at 4K. Stats for nerds. Full screen. And as you can see, on that initial load in, we had four drop frames, but this is going to play throughout without dropping any more. The N150 along with the N100, and even something like the older Intel N4125, does a really good job with 4K video. Not exactly sure what it is, but these lower watt chips are really great for video playback, especially streaming from your favorite website or app. Hulu, Netflix, HBO, and of course YouTube here with a 4K 60 HDR video. Next thing I want to move over to is some gaming. And like I mentioned, you're not going to be able to play AAA games at full speed on this, but there's a ton of indie games and older titles that are going to run at full speed on the N150, especially with that 15 watt TDP set. Here's Hades 2, we're at 1080p, medium settings. Seeing an average of around 75, and I was really hoping that we could lock this at 120. Even taking it down to low, 720p doesn't net us a steady 120 out of it. But, you know, at 60, 1080, medium, it looks great, and it plays just fine. Next game we have here is Dirt 3, and yeah, it's an older one, but it's still a lot of fun. I personally like going back to it, especially with lower-end chips. When we just don't have enough power to play newer games, this is something I always throw on. 1080 medium, seeing an average of around 95 FPS. I also wanted to throw in a source game, so we've got Half-Life 2, 1080p, high settings. Looks great like this, and we're well over 100 FPS. In fact, we're seeing an average of around 156 FPS, and indoors, it will jump up over 200. So if you wanted to play Half-Life 2, obviously, you want to go with some Left 4 Dead, some Portal, it's going to run pretty decently on this machine. And the final thing I wanted to take a look at was some PS2 emulation using PCSX2. DirectX 11 back in with these Intel iGPUs is definitely the way to go, whether you want to do some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator or PS2. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, we're at 2X DirectX 11 back in, running great here. But when I moved over to a harder one to run, I did have to drop the resolution down just a little bit to 1.5X. But when you compare this to, let's say, something like the Raspberry Pi 5, which is actually coming in around the same price for the higher RAM variants, especially when you need to add a micro SD card, power supply, and things like that, this is miles ahead. I mean, we've got an x86 system here coming in at 129 for the 8 gig model, which will allow us to do older games and emulators up to PS2.
Another thing I always like to monitor while testing these mini PECs is total system power consumption, and to do this, I use a kilowatt meter from the wall, and remember, we're in performance mode full time with this. At idle, this is only pulling 5 watts, 4K video playback, we're right there at around 9 watts, and 1080p gaming, up to 21 watts from the wall. That's about the max that I saw this thing pull, and if you're going to be doing lower end emulators, it's going to be lower than 21 watts. That was really just kind of stressing out that iGPU and CPU with PC gaming. And going into this, I knew we'd have a very low power consumption mini PC because that's really what these N-series chips are all about. And the N150 does up the clocks on the CPU and GPU from the N100. With a price point of 130 here with 8 gigs of RAM, it's actually not a bad little system if you know what you're getting into. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning a little more about the GMK Tech Nookbox G3 Plus, I'll leave some links in the description. You can pick it up over on their website or Amazon. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, like a different operating system, we could go with Linux. I'd say Manjaro would run pretty decently on this. Let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.